shall we, st shall we start? Uh, my name is Ayan and uh, I work with the festival. Uh, uh, I uh, organized uh, part of the festival that is concerned with animation, animated film. And actually this program point was my idea that I conceived 11 years ago. Uh, up, up to now, we had uh, 10 great animators guesting this festival. Bori Vojdovnikovic, Jan Schwankmeier, Koji Yamamura, Caroline Leaf, Joanna Queen, Peter Lord, uh, Piotr Sapegin, Chris Landrit, Bill Plimpton. Uh, I forgot one. <laughs> and Mikhaila Pavlatova, a great animator from Czech, from Prague, from the beautiful, magical town. Prague is uh, number 11 in uh, this program. But for me, she is uh, number one. Welcome to Gothenburg. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Okay. <laughs> That's just so strange to hear myself. Also, the names who of these uh, big animators whom I just mentioned, it was also the main attraction for me because it is uh, an honor for me to be at the line with those big names. <laughs> um, so I'm, I am uh, here to tell you something. Sorry. Oh, this is better. Thank you. I'm here to tell you something about my work, how I uh, make animation. I will speak, and then I will also show you some ex some parts of, of my films, and um, it will be kind of improvisation. So we will see. Um, so I will. Maybe if we can have a pictures. Uh, I will just, uh, on the beginning, uh, to show you some slides. This is my favorite picture. Uh, and uh, I like to show it on the beginning, because this is, for me, symbol of uh, animation and the word of the work, the word of animator. Uh, because animation is something that if you start doing it, then it becomes, uh, then you become completely addicted on it. Um, but at the same time, it, uh, it hurts. It is so much, it's really bad choice of the profession, as I call it, because you have no time uh, it, um, creating animation, even if you get help of the computers, uh, it always normal film, seven minute films, uh, seven minute film takes about two years and you have, you have to limit your social life, your eyes get hurt, your back because you are always sitting behind the table or um, wat watching to the computer. Uh, it, is, it is horrible, but at the same time you are getting something, uh, some miracle which keeps you going on the, on that way, so it is animation is as horrible as an alligator. Uh, it hurts. It's horrible, but you voluntarily go inside his mouth uh, because you just cannot help. You just want to be eaten there. You want to be inside animation, especially in short animation film. Uh, so short animation, it's, it's something that most of the people outside of the festivals of, or schools, they don't know about existence of these short films. But, um, and sometimes on the festivals when, I, when there is a market and I meet somebody from the market and they said, uh, they ask me what I'm doing and I say they are, that I make shorts, they think, okay, so you are probably p preparing some feature film. Uh, because uh, sometimes people cannot imagine like why to make animated shorts. Uh, they are not shown anywhere or only on the festivals and of course on the uh, on internet. Uh, they don't have uh, such a big publicity, uh, but there is still quite enough people who are doing it. And uh, 
for me, short animation is a pure animation. It's a, it's a purest anima animation because you are free, especially um, if you make a, a 2D animation or animation which you can make by yourself in your computer or if your technique is uh, somehow simple that you don't need the big crew of people. Uh, you also... You you can start right a, right away, and uh, and it's your personal uh, seeing of the universe. Short animations they are not products. They don't have. There is no market for it, which is bad on one hand. But on the other hand, you are completely free because there is no producer or distributor who would tell you that this must be more for people, that this must be more likable, more colorful. Uh, you are free and you are a creator who can start right away and who can create universe which would not exist without you. Um, also this, uh, this picture, I don't know if you, if you know this uh, image, maybe not, uh, but it is a photograph from Helmut Newton and it's a photo of uh, um, not of Pina Bausch, but uh, probably dancer of Pina Bausch. And it's homage to Pina Bausch, who was a famous German choreographer. And um, I like uh, when I should, I like very much what she was doing. And in my eyes, animation is more close to uh, theater or to modern dance more than to the live action films and to the feature films. Uh, because in live action, in, in film, you are always dealing with reality. Uh, even if you are trying to make, uh, to make your film stylized, live action film, and uh, you are uh, trying not to make the ordinary movie. You, are, you always have actors who have faces like humans, uh, and you and you have um, uh, simply there is a reality. But in animation, uh, it is like in the theater. You have the empty stage, and uh, maybe only black stage and one chair and some black curtains and you can, the actor can convince the audience that uh, uh, it, it happens on the, somewhere in the garden or that uh, you are in some beautiful castle or in some beautiful room. People can be dressed very simply and they are acting and you believe that they are kings or queens or whatever. And uh, also in animation, uh, you can make the film without background, and uh, nobody is uh, nobody is surprised, and uh, people can imagine anything from the simple lines. They can. Um, I really uh, like that you don't have to be realistic in animation, and usually you are not, because this is advantage of animation, that you can pick only what is important. You are not disturbed by details that you don't want to show. And so that's why also the stories in animation, if you draw men and women, usually those characters represent all men and all women. Uh, and uh, while if it would be in live action films they also could rep could uh, it also could be a little bit symbolic but you very often see the those actors who already who are certain type or sometimes you know their names you know the roles that they pay, played in past and suddenly you see the specific actor in it or specific figure and not not just a universal man or universal woman. Uh, so this is uh, this, this is a uh, piece of um, photo from uh, film Pina. It is again, um, as I mentioned, Pina Bausch. So there was a wonderful movie made by Wim, Wim Wenders. 
uh, Pina. Uh, it's kind of artistic documentary about her dance, and I find many similarities because in um, modern theater or in non-verbal theater or in dance and in animation, uh, you can say something which uh, you you feel from this situation some situation which is hard to put to be put to the words, but uh, if you make it in the dance, you understand what is it about. Maybe this is about some doubts, hesitation. Maybe she is uh, she is uh, not so sure how much she loves him, or uh, but maybe there is a different meaning. But you don't need this meaning would be explained. You don't need words, and also in animation, if you work without words, and you just let people to uh, to translate what they what they see, um, it is it is somehow more open for for the audience. This is also from that uh, film. I also um, this is like my inspirational sources. Uh, that's hard for me to say who is my favorite uh, filmmaker. They, they, they are few, but it's just nice to, to take inspiration from here and from there. This is a video art from B Bill uh, Viola. Uh, this is from uh, Abramovich. So you can, uh, you can find uh, inspirations on many places and sometimes video art or combination of uh, video or animation and uh, theater. Uh, there ca can be also inspiration for me and uh, also I have done a little bit uh, with the theater as, as well. Uh, so this is just like my early inspirations. Uh, so this is for uh, trailer for children Tales, which when I grew up there was this this guy, like the first animation which I probably have seen, uh, and then they were uh, various films around me, like uh, this little mole. I I don't know if uh, it was also shown here in Sweden, but it was very popular in Czech Republic and also in China and in other other countries. This was an old uh, commercial in the uh, 70s trailer for commercials, which is funny because I grew up in socialism, so we didn't need commercials because there was not any choice of things. There was usually only one or two things, but they were commercials made. Uh, then uh, I grew up in the country of, uh, with a long tradition of animation film, like films, puppet films from Jiří Trnka. And uh, his illustrations, which were nice and poetic. And uh, by the way, this was a picture. I'm sure that you had the same as the children, that you have the book and there is something scary. And always, if you go through the book, you just don't want to go that page. You just, you just flip on the next page because this was really scary. Uh, this is a Chinese emperor from Andersen. And the death is really scary, how she is flurry. Uh, so another, so they were these nice um, illustrations, because I'm showing it because I realize how much the child is ta taking everything around, e every picture which is on the wall in your parents' house. Then you realize that it is so, so much, uh, in your brain all your life, even if you don't realize it. So this was uh, another ways, um, another kind of uh, illustrations, which or graphic design, which was around me, uh, more st stylized things, graphic things, which I also liked a lot. And this was a book which we had at home, and then I, when I grew up. Uh, he is my husband now, but he is 26 years older, so it happened that then I realized, oh, this was also part of my 
we we made the film the carnival of animals to together and his um n erotical in illustrations were inspiration for my later films this is a, his poster and this is what we mm, painted together which we sometimes do that he, i start the picture he continues and so on uh so this was a this was a big inspirational source when I was at the school. Um, I study um, end of 70s and beginning of 80s uh, animation uh, at the University of Academy of Applied Arts. Actually, I didn't want to be an animator. Uh, I didn't want... I was not focused on animation at all. I have seen various animation films around when I was a child, but... Uh, I was not uh, so interested in it. And uh, from high school, from art high school, I just wanted to go uh, to continue at the university. And, uh, but of course, there was um, 150 people applying for illustration and similar amount of people for graphic, for etching. So then I have noticed that on animation there is only 50 applicants. So that's why I try to sneak in to the school through animation and uh, then I found that I during the studies I found that uh, there is something that I found my way and at the time um, always our professor uh, sent us uh, to the library when we were luck of when we were empty and didn't have any ideas what to do he have sent us to the library to see the pictures of uh, Saul Steinberg, who was, uh, I don't know how, how you know him. Does anyone know this guy, Ian knows? Uh, he was a big inspiration for graphic designers in 60s and in 70s. He was an uh, illustrator in, in New, York, New York Times, right? New Yorker. And... Uh, he encouraged probably many of us that you don't need to have just one style, that you can change styles and it's, it is still you. Uh, like if you see this image and you see that uh, each of them is drawn, each of these characters is drawn a little bit in a different style and they still can sit <coughs> at the same table, uh, maybe you you could know him through these pictures who are <coughs> copied also by other people, these maps that you can see far away. Uh, but what encouraged, encouraged me was, like for example, these figures. Uh, I feel from him freedom of creating, that you don't need to stick to one particular design. Um, and also you can see the characters that, uh, like for example on this couple, uh, the way how you are drawn, you see how different they are. <coughs> you can see that the man, how he is drawn represents somebody who is stiff, probably not very romantic, who likes to have his things in his way. And you can see the woman is, you can see some movement in her, uh, that uh, maybe she is not very satisfied she is she has some she would like to have something different uh, you see that he is he is not moving and you can see that you can see some movement in her some some dreams some like uh, contrasts and the same like like this couple uh, you can also here you can <coughs> uh, you can imagine who they are in the way through the way how they are drawn. Uh, my big inspiration I, I really love to uh, to take uh, to go by metro by subway, especially if you sit the, if you face if you sit that you face the the people. Uh, if the rows are uh, the opposite, they are looking to each other uh, because it's like exhibition of 
faces and also exhibition of stories. Of course, that I know that uh, the way how people look, that they don't, at, they don't, that it doesn't correspond at all who they, who they are. But it is only kind of casting. Uh, that usually if you see some big man who look, who has a, who is sitting there and who has a big heavy face, then uh, you would cast him as some mur murder or somebody silly or heavy. But you know by experience that probably, or not probably, but there is a big chance that there is inside this man is very fragile soul, that maybe he loves poetry and that he is very sensitive. Uh, but there is no time to uh, to talk to those people, so you are just seeing people and seeing, uh, and especially if they are in couples or in some in some situations, you can see only how couple if they hold each other or if how close they are sitting or you think uh, you can imagine how is it in their homes. But of course, only probably reality is completely different. Very often uh, is the contrary, but uh, this is a nice inspiration. Or I like um, escalators when, when people are passing, uh, when you are watching just a moving exhibition of faces. Uh, so if I should name uh, two, two films, which influenced me a lot. So this was Tango from Polish filmmaker Zbigniew Rybczynski, um, which is a situation about, about life, about... Uh, actually, there is repetition and there is a very simple situation how there is first just one person coming and, and leaving and then the other people are coming and staying. And then at one moment you have... Uh, there are people representing all life, old people, young people, young lovers, the baby, and then they go away and there is on only, again, the first boy with a ball. So it is about all life. And this is a, these are films that I like, uh, films which are about... Uh, films that are about... Uh, or life, and you don't need uh, in a, in a very uh, like a stylized way. Uh, it is all inside. Sorry, nobody ever calls me, but it is uh, fortunately silent. You don't hear it, right? Good. Um, and another. So uh, that that film Tango, I like films which have something very simple inside, like films from Jan, Jan Schwankmeier, who is another inspiration, the whole body of his work. Uh, I suppose that you, you may know him. Schwankmeier, this one. Uh, so his, his films are very rich with a, a very rich form, he is using very much, yeah, I have only one picture. Uh, he is using very often uh, surrealistic stuff like um, meat and, and eyeballs and it looks, it looks uh, a little bit disgusting and at the same time it's uh, fascinating and, uh, but always it's a, if you, you see that, in, that the form is rich but inside is something what he wants to say is simple. This is what I like about the uh, about the film, uh, this tango, um, that Polish film, that the structure is simple. People are coming more and more people, and then less and less. It has a little bit. It is a little bit built like Bolero from Ravel. That it is the same motif which repeats and which grows and grows, and it's bigger and bigger, but it's still the same. And then. It's a peak and it collapses. Um, but I also, this is film which is uh, actually very different, but uh, 
also like the second biggest inspiration, and it is film Satimanie from Zdenko Gasparovic, uh, Yugoslav director. Both films, Tango and uh, Satimanie, they both won Oscars, or both were nominated. Tango won, and, and uh, this Satimanie was probably only nominated. And this is a film which consists from separate stories. Uh, those stories are uh, drawn in a little bit different style that you can see. Uh, I think that you can also see on um, uh, on Gasparovic some influence of Saul Steinberg, right? Uh, like he is not afraid to mix styles. And uh, what I like on, on that film that there's a film that it's hard to say what is it about because it is about feelings, but you you feel the sadness, some sadness and men and women relationships which are so hard and complicated and at the same time simple. So probably this film, these two films, they are the peaks that I always, with each my film, I try to get close to them, but I never succeeded. Uh, um, so this is another, uh, this is just to see, this is just to see how great is on animation that each film has a completely different form. Uh, again, if I compare it with a f uh, live action film or film from reality, they can be different actors, different stories, but if you would give the same story to five animators, you would get five completely visually different stories about uh, visually complete, <laughs> five completely different films, also visually different. Uh, if the same story would be done in by five live action film directors, they also would vary, they would be a little bit different, but not that much, because they would have only actors with their faces that cannot be adjustable so much. Uh, so this is just to illustrate that you can uh, draw nice sketchy lines or to make puppets. By the way, I'm always very uh, jealous to people who can um, put to their animation film, the freshness of sketch. For you who have experience with animation, you probably know what I'm talking about. <coughs> On the beginning, when you make sketches, you draw quickly. And this is from the film, but it has still the feeling of the sketch that uh, it is uh, that he didn't think about it so much, that he did it quickly, but it's still from the film, and I, I don't know how he succeeded, because uh, first sketches, first drawings are fresh and um, fast and have life in it. And then when you start to execute the film, you have to make more sketches, you have to find the right proportions, and suddenly the character gets stiffer and stiffer, and uh, especially then when you make when you animate and when you make the key drawings, you have to make them carefully, it means slowly, and suddenly you get the drawing which is so completely different different from the original sketch. And um, this, yes, this is a process which sometimes you think about the original idea, how fresh and uh, leisure it was, and uh, and then the final film how design is so, uh, that the lines look like wires. Yeah, these are other inspirations. And always it's uh, nice to see something from old art of the old masters. By the way, this is funny. It is, he uh, worked with his, um, 
with his paintings, like uh, with the uh, supermodels now in a uh, Photoshop, making their legs longer, looking more beautiful. <laughs> this is a pic picture to show something which is important in life. It is not the animation, but it is it is life, <laughs> because uh, we are living in the country, in the countryside, and we have the house uh, together next to our house is uh, the normal lady who is working on the on the field uh, she is a former teacher but now she is all her time giving to her garden and i always animate and sit in my room with my uh, windows closed because i don't want to have light in it and then i get out and i am in that country and i think suddenly seeing these salads, it means like that I'm making something what nobody needs, something what has no meaning, and then you see these salads, and that's, that's the life. And I also realized why happened that in past there were not so many animation films in, um, in past centuries, because people just didn't have time for art, because they, have, they spent all their time on make there something to eat. Okay, so this was probably too long. Um, so now if uh, when I was mentioning different styles of films or that uh, different visuals. Uh, I am not as good a drawer like uh, like um, Steinberg. I, I know my limits. My limits is drawing. I'm not so good. It's animation. I cannot. Maybe my positive is my thinking, but I cannot animate so well, I cannot draw so well, so I always have to make the story, to make the story which I know that I can manage. <laughs> uh, but when you animate, uh, even if you make the shortest film, it there is a, some creative part on the beginning which is very refreshing, and then comes a part that you have to sit and you have to make many mechanical, kind of mechanical work compared to, to the other parts. It means that you have to make many in-betweens and doesn't matter if you drew it on the paper or if you make it in the computer, there is still a lot of mechanical work. And that's why I like to change styles and I often make films that is not one story but that the film is from uh, episodes and each episode is sometimes drawn in a slightly different style and uh, it keeps me to be to be fresh or uh, I like to draw each film in a little bit different graphic style which I will show you here <coughs> it is also because each story needs a little bit different uh, needs a little bit different style of if you make something which is more for children probably you will actually I always make only film for adults but um, but you can imagine that if you make some story which is more kind uh, or for children that you want to make some drawing uh, some pictures which would be nice then um, uh, and then, of course, if you make some horror film, I have never made any horror, so then uh, you would probably choose something, different colors or different characters, different proportions of, of, the, of, the, of the bodies. And um, I like to change styles. It is maybe because I don't have any style, but I think that my style is having many styles, which sounds a little bit like nonsense, uh, but I don't care. <laughs> there are some people, uh, usually 
the general audience like artists that you can say this is Bill Plimpton, uh, this is Prit Pern, or uh, especially Bill Plimpton. He now he you you can always say that it's it's him. Uh, and, and many filmmakers and also many illustrators, you can, uh, from one his drawing, you can, you are sure that it's him or her. <coughs> and um, I know that I would be much more favorite if I would keep to one style. But sometimes I admire them that they can keep one style because there is so visual style, because there is so many things that you are seeing every day, which influence you that, uh, and you are developing also. And also changing styles means that you don't get bored by yourself, which is something important, that you are still working with a joy and freshness. So here you can see the drawing from my diploma film. So these are drawings which look like wires. Uh, but it was about. Uh, it was uh, already already my first diploma film was about communication, men and women sitting arguing. He say A, she tries to convince him. She's saying B. Uh, most of most films I have done were about men and women relationships, or about uh, communication bet between people very often between, uh, in a couple. Uh, I am not good in creating stories which would not exist, uh, because then you need some fantasy to, uh, to it. Uh, and I don't, have, I don't have fantasy to come up with a story which is not based on something that I would know. Uh, but if you, uh, so I am taking very often inspiration in the in the life around, uh, as I said, from the faces or from uh, stories which you which you imagine, and uh, sorry, I'm just realized that I have to be more funny, not uh, because somebody is leaving. So maybe I should show you some film. Um, but I think that uh, anim uh, reality is quite ins like a big inspiration if you know how to look at it. So this was another film about couples. Uh, still similar style. Uh, still quite stiff style. And this was a film which I, I will show you, and this was a film uh, that it was a third film which uh, brought me the most of, of the glory from all my films. Maybe here are people who have seen it already, or uh, it will be also in my retrospective, but I will, uh, I will play it now and then I will tell you more about it.
Thank you. So this film was the original idea for this film. Before, I already have done two films about uh, communication. So it was, I already knew that I want to make something um, like, uh, like this. But the original idea, they were drawings some kind of these drawings, doodles, doodles is the name for, for these drawings, uh, which you make uh, when you are making the phone call, that you draw something or you, you write something without thinking about it. And sometimes you can find that there is some uh, beginning of some idea that you can develop. And there was, so I had many, um, Unfortunately, I don't have many pictures from that period because it was, uh, I threw most of the things away and then it was my most famous film, so it would be good to have the sketches. And since then I am saving all sketches and already, now I still had some, some other successful films, but um, I know that it's interesting to see the, where it came from. So I started to draw uh, people uh, and that their communication was in the shape of the bubbles. But uh, then I felt that I have, like many, uh, if you have the tree, there is a trunk and the branches, right? And I had all the branches of the tree, all these, how people, uh, all these kind of uh, dialogues between two people with the different shapes of bubbles, but I still didn't know like what structure to give to the film. And the structure is uh, the most important thing in the film because otherwise it is only like mosaic of, of ideas and it needs to have some form. So this is almost invisible. Here, they were also the, yeah, this is also one of the sketches. Uh, so, um, um, you always you always find to f uh, you always always have to find the frame, and the frame can be very different. The, or at least if if I had these pieces, this uh, as I said branches, with the different people talking, then you can uh, I could put them in the order. For example, from the morning until the evening, when you wake up. Uh, and you go to work and then you go through your day and that uh, they are different um, uh, different kind of conversations you have through the whole day. But then I thought that it is like too obvious or too linear. Then I thought that it would be also maybe interesting to make it from uh, like the whole life, uh, from the first uh, word of the child when he says maybe mama or mama and uh, to the to the last sentence give me more light or mehr licht or something like a famous words which um, famous people are saying in the last minute minute of their of the death it would be also possible, it would also give some order to it because it would go from the child through schools, through the love, uh, family, no, no, no. But again, I thought that it's too simple. And uh, so finally, I thought that if I will take the cafe, that there can be all uh, discussions, all, all conversations at the same time, at the same place. So I already had the playground, which was a cafe. And then the, through the film goes that story of the, of the couple who meets on the beginning. And then um, 
they are actually li living, they are building this common, l this life together, they, they are building this puzzle. So it is like a metaphor of living together, which is nice on the beginning, then comes the first problems, then he leaves and uh, etc., which you have seen. So this is something which goes through the film and uh, so this this was the structure. And uh, the here I generated the character which was the most favorite, probably you know whom I'm talking about about. His color of is yellow and it's a yellow dog, which was uh, most of the people reacted to the yellow dog, but he was put to the film only like the spice, uh, because I thought uh, that I want to have something which doesn't necessarily belong to the film, but if it's there, uh, mm, it always brings some, uh, some fun. Like, for example, uh, I really like films when uh, there is something important happening in the in, in front and on the backstage you see that somebody comes or, and then disappears so your eye is suddenly notices something which is in the in the background so uh, this yellow dog he was only only to put there some pepper to it and then finally uh, he started then he seemed like uh, almost solving the the story becoming the third uh, main character when I have finished this film, uh, it was so different than I wanted, because I probably wanted with the film words, 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 to make some crossing between um, Tango from Rybczynski and Satimania from Gasparovic, I don't know what, but on the beginning you have some vision which is beautiful, where you still don't see th your limits, and, uh, and then was the final film, uh, which looked completely different and suddenly it was steady. Uh, I felt that I I did not show what I could, but I could not show more because I, I did my best. Uh, simply there was a final mix and uh, the final sound mix is the moment when after that, you, you always during the work on your film, you always hope that the next step will help to the film. You start to animate, it doesn't look so good, so then you think, but with sounds, it will be okay. So then sounds comes, it's a little bit better, then you are waiting for the music, and then you always hope that the next step will save the film. And then was a final mix, and I was so sad and disappointed from the film that I started to cry. <sighs> like, after two years, that you, it's lost. So then I found that uh, prob not always you are the one who can estimate the best your film or your work because then it was my most uh, success successful film which gained also Oscar nomination. Um, so what else to say about about this film? Does anyone have some question as far? Maybe about the film Repete or about anything else. Uh, maybe just to uh, when I have mentioned that I am not good in good animator. I am not good animator. I think that I am good in timing, and timing is important part of animation very very much, because timing is also important part of acting. That uh, the actors are not actors are not good only in the way how they act and how they say it, but also in which moment they say it, how much pauses, pauses, pauses uh, they give between the sentences. Uh, and uh, especially in animation, because you are an actor, you are the one who is acting, because um, you are giving the timing, you are decide that uh, the hold, the moment when he doesn't move, is 
that much frames long and then, or if you make it shorter, then the action seems different. Uh, so I am. I think that I'm good in timing. Then I think that I'm good in blinking at the right moment. Um, it is like everybody knows that in animation, the basic movement which makes the character sing alive is that you have the face which doesn't move, and suddenly when it blinks, uh, you it seems like alive. Um, and in most of my films, also people are not moving. They are sitting behind the tables, or they are only they only have a facial expressions. There is not so many so many things moving. Yes, I see you. There is a question. Hey, hello, thank you so much. Uh, I was thinking about yesterday at the screening at Haga Bion, you mentioned that one of the films had been part of an installation. Installation. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I was just wondering how you think it's different to work with these linear films and um, uh, exhibiting animation in, in a room where, where things can go on in a different way. Yes. Uh, thank you. Um, yesterday on the screening, actually in the screening, in the program, uh, there was there was a film which was called Are You Listening to Me? And I'm just trying to skip project. Just a second. I want to find. I will come to you in a second. Mm. Here. No, it's not in iMovies. Yes. Uh, yesterday, I have, <laughs> uh, I have shown one film which was called "Are You Listening to Me?" and it was. Uh, base, originally, it was the installation for two monitors with two uh, with two film loops. Each of them was a different length, which I, I can show you here how it worked like. Uh, that was something which I have done, I think, 2011 or 12 or a couple of years ago. Uh, and I have made this installation which was meant for to be exhibited on the place where somebody can come and see it and leave whenever they want to. Uh, because I just wanted to try something else. I must say that sometimes I have big doubts about animation. But it is something which probably happens to uh, all of us, and maybe it is, it comes in the certain moment of of life, or maybe it has something to do uh, with time now, when uh, somehow many people don't seem to understand why are we doing something which takes so long time, which you cannot sell, which is. Uh, Somehow you are supposed to be effective now, successful and effective. And uh, uh, so this is one thing that sometimes I think like why I am spending so much time with something without publicity, without people seeing it. And at the same time, I, I like doing it. Another thing is that I had a chance in my life to also to direct to live action films uh, where you have, even if you make the worst or ordinary normal live action film, then you get, uh, it is shown in the cinema, they are actors, they want to write articles about it and uh, you get much more recognition than working all your life in something maybe more interesting. And, uh, but I like it as much, but what happened to me afterwards, that I have lost patience. 
after directing live action film. Uh, I was so exhausted that I again wanted to sit and animate uh, and to be alone, to be apart from those, um, apart from the big crew uh, on the set. But then I found that I have lost patience. So then, since then, I'm always trying to find the way how to uh, get something that, how to animate something that it doesn't take so much, so much uh, time. So in last years, I'm not making so many films for some big productions in animation. Uh, because of this, all my doubts, which I have in my head. But I am making animations more for myself or as a part of something else. I have done something for the theater. Or I make animation like uh, what you have seen yesterday, which I haven't seen to any competition because it's not film for, for the mm, fil film festival. It's more, you can feel somehow that it's, it's not the film film. Uh, and somehow I like the idea, uh, which is completely different, because normally if you make the film, you want people would sit and be focused for the whole time to sit in the dark room and to watch your film from the beginning to the end. And uh, on the installation, it's, it's different. Uh, but I like that as well. I will now show you uh, how it works originally, that installation. Maybe this one. It is right part. And maybe this is this is left part. Okay. So now I must make it a little bit smaller. I don't know if you will... if you will see anything. So this is left, this is right. So they were two loops. Uh, this is nine minutes, and this is 12 minutes. So you imagine that if there are two DVD players, that one loop is going faster, or that it happens that uh, suddenly the picture, it always comes with the same, uh, on one screen, on the left screen is mostly picture, and on the right scene is mostly, mostly text. And uh, what I like that uh, you see if you, of course, if you have enough patience, but it also happens that sometimes you get to the mood and you sit there and you watch it, uh, that you see this picture and there is a text, kiss me. And another time, because it comes again, it comes with a text, uh, he is so handsome. And suddenly you see the picture is about something different. And this is what fascinated me so much. I think that it is Kuleshov effect, or it is something, some principle from editing the film that uh, it depends, that you can change completely uh, what is on the picture if you put another m different music or different uh, scenes, um, if you put, put it uh, in, be in between different scenes. So I will play you a li little bit of it.
So I will not um, bother you long with this thing because it 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 works the best when it is let on people's decision if they want to watch it or not. But uh, when I made this, there is very primitive animation. There is almost none, no situation. Only some some simple movement or some uh, or some blinking eye movement or something. You see, like for example, this picture, if it has uh, this title, looks completely different than if we will put... <laughs> uh, this, this title or this one. They are like three different pict pictures. Um, but then somehow I didn't continue with uh, making these things because <coughs> uh, you are always in your group. I'm in the group of animation director. When I started to make live action films, it was like coming to the place where nobody knew me even in our small Czech Republic. They knew that I'm making animation, but for people from big films, animation is like something is uh, they know that it exists, they knew that I have got some uh, successful films, but they they feel that it has nothing to do with the film, and also they uh, sometimes ask me, so what are you people from long big films, they ask me, so what are you doing now? And I said, I am preparing animation film, and they said, okay, so, uh, oh, uh, Shall we take another drink? And then I wanted to say, no, I'm making animation film. It's also film. It's only short, but it is. it can also say a lot. <laughs> it can maybe say the same as your long film. It on only say it in very short, condensed <coughs> way. But this is how it is. And uh, so that's why I uh, didn't go, why I didn't develop more this um, installation things because it would be again you would have to find the word of fine artist or video artist which would be the new group and uh, so I didn't uh, spread my activities okay um, so probably I, I have no time to show you uh, to show you my film Tram, but for you who may come to see the screening, I can show some sketches, right? Uh, so, uh -huh. at the moment, I'm considered as somebody who is making film about sex. <laughs> it is because I have made some film Carnival of Animals, which was about erotics, and then I made a film um, uh, Trem, which is in the in the program, which was for the um, French project about women erotical fantasies. So this is one of the sketches when I try to get the idea, because to make the film about women about erotical fantasies, it sounds exciting but then you find that uh, like what to do and all other scripts it was supposed to be feature film consisting from short animation shorts made by women and all women have something beautiful some beautiful film stories about beautiful women with beautiful men so then I decided that I want to make the opposite that I want to make something ugly and primitive so this was like first I tried to find uh, something provocative and not sexual. Then I somehow came to the woman who is driving the tram, uh, woman, wo woman who is not beautiful, who is not attractive, and somehow men don't see her. Uh, to this film, I wanted to, I wanted to. Uh, also to draw it in a simple way. 
as I was uh, mentioning the styles that it is good to have, that I don't mind to have a different styles, I knew that this film has to be done, has to be drawn in a kind of primitive way. So my original I intention was to make it black and black and white uh, in a in a simple simple line uh, and to be drawn a little bit like a s sketchy. But you can see also in this drawing the process that on the beginning you see the freshness of the of the um, first sketches where you still don't know how it will how it will look like uh, drawings which are done quickly and then this is still uh, quite uh, fresh, fresh, fresh. And then it comes to the moment that you have to make the Bible, which is your drawings are pre presented to the uh, possible financing people and they want to see the characters. So these other drawings are already a little bit stiff, the presentation. And then you have to decide which technique. Suddenly the color comes because the producer wants to have colors. Uh, actually, the producer, he gave me quite a freedom. He just wanted to have it a little bit more nice with some background. So these were originally colors of the background. <coughs> On the beginning, uh, there is a tram driver who has some dreams about men who are in, in, the, in the car in the tram and she imagines that they get aroused and she is playing with their penises, which on the beginning had this form. But fortunately later I have changed that they are not on these big penises, but uh, their fantasies because she is driving with these gear, gears, with these levers, she is pulling the levers. So in the final film, uh, okay, you will see. Um, so she is she is pulling uh, gigantic levers, and this is just to see. So then, when the, you are trying to find the visuals, and uh, you are going through After Effects, and there is so many possibilities how to do it, and put some metal structures and so on, and then insert sometimes. You think like, my God, I wanted on the beginning that it would be only with only. Black line, very simple, no backgrounds, no effects. Um, sometimes it's, uh, and especially if you have uh, in animation such a wide choice of colors and effects and focusing, unfocusing, and you have to uh, think, you have to wake up and to, but actually in each profession, sometimes you get so much in it and you have to step out and to say, no, on the beginning I wanted, the film would be simple. So these are the final uh, drawings. I made it in flesh, which is, uh, this is a raw flesh without the effects, and these are the effects which were applied to the film in, in the program After Effects. Um, and the original music from this film, usually I am, as I said, in as I said today or yesterday, I'm inspired by the drawing or by the music or by some mechanism, by some structure. And this was a uh, inspiration. So this was how it was screened in Hiroshima Film Festival. I was inspired by the music, which is funny because it was a, uh, when you are an animator, Sometime, and you think about something, usually it's good to have a referential music that you are listening to it over and over and you animate on something and you know that later you will replace the music uh, with something else because very often you don't have the rights to the music. You get the, some music from internet, you know that it's expensive and that some, then later you will have to ask some composer. But this is a the music for Trem is from serious live action film, Czech film from, um, which was like one or two years before Trem. And it was a film about uh, the World War II. But I like the music so much that I have used it as a referential music for Trem. And then we thought that we will replace it. But then the French producer felt in love with that and he didn't want it 
to have it. Uh, he just wanted to keep it there. I don't know. I don't speak s uh, Swedish, but uh, Ayan is doing this. What do you think that it means? <laughs> he wants my mouth shut up. <laughs> so, yeah, that's it. That's it. You know, if I have a microphone, I can speak forever. So it's good someone would make this shut up sign. Uh, so thank you for, for coming. And if you are interested to see the films, they will be shown today. Thank you very much. I didn't give you any place for questions and answers, but... Sorry. Thank you.